think how websites create those smooth hover effects, fading animations, or interactive designs. In this video, I'm going to break down CSS transitions for you step by step. We will cover everything from the basic syntax to advanced examples, and I will also share some fun exercises for you to try out. By the end, you will know exactly how to make your website more dynamic and interactive. So, what are CSS transitions? Let's start with the basics. A CSS transition allows you to change a property of an element smoothly over time instead of instantly. For example, think about a button that changes color when you hover over it. Without transitions, the color would change immediately, which looks fine but feels a bit abrupt. With transitions, the color fades smoothly, giving it a more professional and polished effect. Now let's look at the CSS transition syntax. Don't worry, it's very easy. The transition is controlled using a special CSS property called transition. Let's look at how it works with a simple example. Now let's break down this code into smaller parts so it's easier to understand. Here we have added a class called box to a div element. This is the element we will apply the transition to. In the CSS, we have used the transition property. The first value all means that we want every property of this element to transition smoothly when it changes. You can also specify individual properties like background color or transform if you only want those to transition. Next we have 2 second. This means the transition will take 2 seconds to complete. You can adjust this to make it faster or slower based on what you need. The third part is ease. This controls the speed of the transition at different stages. For example, ease starts slow, it speeds up in the middle and slows down at the end. I will explain timing functions in more details. Finally, we have added a hover state. When you hover over the box, its background color changes to core and it grows slightly larger with this scale function. This entire change is controlled by the transition. So what happens here? When the mouse moves over the box, the hover state gets triggered. Instead of the changes happening instantly, the transition creates a smooth effect that lasts for 2 seconds. This gives the element a nice animated feel. To sum up, the basic syntax of a CSS transition has three parts. The property to change, the duration of the transition, and an optional timing function. Once you understand these, you can create all sorts of smooth and beautiful effects. Okay, now that we know how to set up a basic transition, let's talk about timing functions. These are what control the speed of the transition at different stages. There are five main timing functions you can use and each one creates a unique effect. To explain this, let's use a simple animation. I have five circles on the screen and each will move from the left side of the screen to the right. The only difference between them is their timing function. The first circle uses linear. This means the speed is constant throughout the animation. It doesn't start slow or fast, it just moves at the same speed. The second circle uses ease. This is the most commonly used timing function because it starts slow, speeds up in the middle and slows down again at the end. It feels natural and smooth. Next is ease in. Here the animation starts slow and then speeds up as it progresses. With ease out, it's the opposite. The animation starts quickly and then slows down at the end. Finally, we have ease in out. This combines both effects. It starts slow, speeds up in the middle and then slows down again at the end. As you can see, timing functions add a lot of flexibility to your transitions. They help you control how smooth or dynamic an animation feels. Sometimes you will want to transition more than one property at the same time. For example, imagine a card that grows larger, changes color and adds a shadow when you hover over it. Let me show you how to do that. In this example, we are transitioning three properties, width, background color, and box shadow. By specifying each property individually in the transition property, we can control their duration and timing independently. All right, now it's your turn. Here are a couple of fun exercises you can try to practice CSS transitions. Number one, button glow effect. Create a button that glows when you hover over it. Use the box shadow property to create the glow effect and add a smooth transition to make it pop. Number two, image zoom. Design an image gallery where each image zooms in slightly when hovered over. This is great for creating interactive photo grids. Number 3. Text color fade. Write a heading where the text color fades from black to a bright color, like orange when hovered over. These exercises will help you get comfortable with CSS transitions. If you enjoyed learning about CSS transitions, you will love my video on creating a parallax effect. It's a great way to add depth and motion to your website. I've also covered some amazing VS Code extensions that can make coding transitions and animations. Be sure to check those out. I've linked them in the description below. CSS transitions are a simple yet powerful tool. Make your website more dynamic 
dynamic and engaging. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more coding tutorials. And if you would like me to cover a specific topic, let me know in the comments below.